Hey, hey, what is up, spiritual hooligan? What if you could find and release the limiting beliefs that make you worry or doubt or fret or feel frustrated or uncomfortable? What if you could pierce straight through the denial mechanism of the mind and find those beliefs that aren't serving you? Well, you can actually. There's a little known tool called applied kinesiology. It's more commonly called muscle testing that can help you to do that. And today I'm going to have you tune into my event again, Epic Life Live, where I'm going to share with you my perspective on using muscle testing to destroy limiting beliefs, what I call dogma. My name is Matthew Ferry and I'm bringing you your daily enlightenment. It's your moment to pause, to slow down, to get connected to enlightened perspectives. I want to help you to quiet your mind and restore your peace. Now, let's go ahead and jump in because you can't prove if what you believe about life, about people, death, birth, religion, or most things are true. And I can't either. So I decided to apply muscle testing to the process to see what happens. And the results have been spectacular. My mind has gone completely quiet because I've been able to discern which ideas, thoughts, beliefs are strengthening and fortifying to my system, also known as putting me into an all is well state, and which of my beliefs and ideas and, and frameworks about the world weaken me and cause my body to go into a survival state, which is why your mind talks. So let's tune in right now. I think you're going to get a lot out of this. So what we're going to do, everybody, is we are just going to jump straight in and start busting dogma. My goal here, I want to take on some of the fundamental dogmatic statements, and I want to show you how muscle testing works. And tomorrow I'm going to be muscle testing on you. In fact, anyone who wants to be muscle tested on during the event, there's plenty of people who can muscle test. I'll try to muscle test on as many people as I possibly can to kind of show you what it does and, and why I've become so uh, passionate about using it in my process. But today, I'm going to bring up a few people that I know if I test on them, the statements themselves aren't going to cause their, their system to go into survival. They can withstand some of these statements. So if I could bring Deanna, uh, Mary Jo, and Jason up, we're going to put them in these chairs and we're going to do some testing. We're going to do the fundamental statements. And when I say the fundamental statements, what I found is that when I do these statements in this segment and then in the segment after the break, when I do these statements, it causes the mind to go quiet. And for years and years and years, I've been doing one-on-one -on -one sessions where I would meet with somebody and I would say, okay, check this out. And we would first, it would take us about an hour to get their body to start functioning. Let me just say that again so you get it. It would take about an hour to get them to a place where they could even muscle test. Then once we got them to that place, I would take them through these statements that we're about to do. And what I found for myself personally, and I believe it'll be the same for you, is the more I expose myself to these fundamental statements, the quieter my mind got, the more my courage exploded the more I was willing to do anything that I felt like doing. I stopped operating out of guilt and obligation. Now, I will tell you that that does piss people off. And I will warn you before we leave that there's going to be a little destruction that's going to occur as you go back because the things that we're about to do are going to actually cause you to go into a completely different domain of thinking and dreaming and being. So I wrote it down in this way. The more you do this, these statements that we're about to do, the quieter your mind will get. You've been bombarded with millions and millions of ideas about how to live, how to be happy that can't be proven. And these days, the vast majority of the ideas that you receive on how to live, how to be happy, how to operate effectively are done by advertisers trying to sell you something. So they're not necessarily in your best interest. You doing what they say is in the best interest of them getting paid. 
that's the vast majority of the programming that you're going to receive. But tonight, we're going to take on some things that will shatter many of those programs instantaneously. So what we're going to do to start the process is we're going to set our intention. I know the reason that we set intentions is we are acknowledging that there is a energy and information stream that is coming through us. And an intention is this new stuff that's coming. So we're going to not only say intentions together, I'm going to request that you write intentions down and then we're going to practice aligning and we're going to work to, to remove the misalignment in your intentions coming true. One of the things that Kristen and I have noticed is as our mind has gone completely quiet, we think about things and then they happen. Not because we're more magical, but simply because we're less fretful. We're less fearful. We're less concerned and worried. So we just simply take action in the direction of the intention as it comes through. Who has not seen muscle testing occur before? Who's never seen it occur? So you've never seen it? Anyone else not seen it before? Back there, anyone? Okay, good. You haven't seen muscle testing occur, okay. Anyone else over here? Okay, so everybody else has seen muscle testing occur. It's essentially, we give a stimulus, and then we see, it, which is just going to be a word or a phrase or an image or things like that. When I learned about it, my, my mentor said he was at a seminar and the guy put a picture of Jesus up and everybody in the room was testing another person's arm and everyone's arm went strong when they looked at Jesus, no matter if they were a Buddha, agnostic, an atheist, right? didn't matter. Across the board, everyone was strengthened just by the concept, the idea of who that person was. And he put up Adolf Hitler and boom, everybody's arm went weak. And he was like, whoa, my mentor was like, holy smoke, something's going on here. And he ended up doing some incredible work. If you haven't read Dr. David Hawkins' work, Power Versus Force, mind-blowing stuff, changed my life forever. But ultimately, I had to stand on my mentor's shoulders because my mentor was absolutely convinced that a strong muscle test meant true and that a weak muscle test meant false. And over time, I was not able to corroborate these ideas. And in the end, I had to come to my own conclusion. And here's what I found out. A strong muscle test means it strengthens you. <laughs> That's it. And a weak muscle test means it weakens you. That's all, folks. That's, that's it. There's nothing else going on here. A strong muscle test means it strengthens you. Now, let me ask you a question. If you are strong, what is your experience of life? You are in a fortified state. Things are working and operating. Things are functioning. And if you are weak, what is your experience of life? Things are harder. Now, here is another interesting thing to think about. When you are strong, the body feels safe. And when the body feels safe, the mind doesn't have to talk. And when you are weak... The body feels like there is a possible threat, and the mind gets active. If your mind is chatty, it is very simply because you are weak in some way. Something in your system is weak. And if your mind is calm and quiet, it is a reflection of the strength and the fortitude that you are experiencing in your body. Every time I get sick, like I'm having a cold or the flu or whatever, my mind goes freaking berserk. I don't normally have talking in my mind, but all of a sudden, if I'm like nose is running and I'm moping around, my mind's like, what about this? And well, nobody's going to come to the seminar and you're going to be a loser. It's going to be terrible and everyone hates you. <laughs> like, what is going on? The physiology is weak. 
So these three, we have been testing on them for a while. They do all of their own testing as well. So it it is easier for me to start the event by testing on people I've already tested on, but we're gonna get out there and test on you too, and we're gonna do all kinds of wacky stuff, okay? So make sure 100% if you are in any kind of doubtful state about muscle testing, do not under any circumstances leave the room today without having someone muscle test on you first. Let's just do a couple tests. So we're gonna start here and I'm just gonna push down now. I'm gonna use two fingers, cause look, it's not a lot of, you know, I don't wanna hurt her here, okay? So think love, resist, good. Think hate, resist. So, and you can see she's trying to keep it up. It'll start to hurt her arm if she does that too much, okay? Let's go here. Think love, resist, and then think hate, resist. Now I'm gonna explain that in a minute here, okay? And let's go over here, think love, resist, Think hate, resist. So we can see love and hate are both strong on him. What could it be? So let's... <laughs> if someone says I love you to you on a regular basis, is that going to be intuitively fortifying or degrading? Fortifying. It's going to be fortifying. Well, it turns out it is actually fortifying, physiologically. And if someone says to you, I hate you on a regular basis, fortifying or degrading? Degrading. degrading. So intuitively, we know that. And what I started to do was use that as a way, a barometer to see what's going on with the body. So we can see love and hate is, is operating in a way that we think would be intuitive with Deanna. With Mary Jo, it is operating with the way we think it would be intuitively. Love makes you strong, hate makes you weak. But we come over here to Jason and we can see that Jason is experiencing love and hate strong. Now the mind goes, well, look at these muscles, they're much bigger. That must be it. But that is not actually it. Because normally, if you guys have come in the past, we have Cuthberto up here. Cuthberto has the body of a bodybuilder. He has shoulders that are about this big. And love and hate will operate exactly the same way with these other two. So what's happening is his system is basically saying, bring it on, come on, come on, huh? let's go. I'll be strong no matter what you bring at me. His system is in some kind of fight or flight. And when you're in fight or flight, Nothing works. The muscle testing doesn't work. So we have to get him out of fight or flight, and I request that you help me. Because one thing that you don't know about yourself is that when you change your mind, the world changes. Now, I'm going to prove it to you later, but right now I just need your help. So I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to transmit the message to Jason. Jason, Please forgive and release us for being traitors. And we forgive and release you for being a traitor. And then Jason, I want you with Christianity through all time to ask for forgiveness and, re and release and recognition that we're all one. So just close your eyes for a moment. Please forgive and release me. No, you don't need to say it out loud. No, just, just be it. Just live it. Okay. Let's... So now we're going to just play around and see if we can take some statements and see what happens with these statements. So let's just see if we can get this guy going again. All right. Think love, resist, and just think I effing hate you, resist. So we can see now, see what's happening. So his arm doesn't go all the way down. You notice that? Whereas I go over here, watch this. Think love, resist. And then you just think, I hate you, resist. And you see, and if you get a chance to see her face, her face is like this, like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> she, she wants to keep it up, but the, the body is failing, okay? So, and you're going to notice as we continue to practice with Jason that it just 
gets more and more and more because what's going to happen as we go through these statements is he's going to get out of the survival state. Now, one thing that I will tell you, he's right in the middle of selling his house and he has three kids under five and his wife is back at home, AKA extreme survival state. So we're going to get, we have to get him to calm down a little bit. Okay. So here we go. Okay. So my question to you today is what would you like me to put to the test? I'll, I'll test anything, right? So leave me a comment and I will test your ideas on a future daily enlightenment. Put it in the comments for me. Okay. I'd love to test what you believe is true and what you think would be strengthening or weakening. Let's put this stuff to the test. Leave me a comment below. My name is Matthew Ferry, author of Quiet Mind, Epic Life. And I would love for you to like this Daily Enlightenment. You watched it all the way through. You listened all the way through. Like it? Will you share it with your other fellow spiritual hooligans? That would be really valuable to them, to me, to all of us, to our whole community. And definitely leave a comment. That's the stuff that tells these big platforms that this is an idea worth spreading. So please subscribe. I will be putting out a Daily Enlightenment every single day. And if you want, you can join us over in our Spiritual Hooligans Facebook group. I'll put the link down below. You can check that out. I'm so excited that you tuned in to this Daily Enlightenment. Thanks for doing that.